You know, when I was doing some searching recently on Google, just looking up different keywords that people are searching for, I found that the prepper gear list was a very searched type of term. And I was a little bit surprised by that, but people are looking for examples. They want to know what people are using to be more prepared. And that makes a lot of sense. But there's also people who are trying to understand how to make the prepper gear list. Like what's the process? Because it seems like it's a little bit more complicated than just trying to find different categories to put on paper and then just scribble in different items to meet those categories. And I would have to agree, there's a little bit of a process. And of course, you know, everybody has a different approach to this, but this is my approach. First is the identifying of your needs. Is it short term, long term, you know, and try to be specific as possible. What exactly are you even preparing for? And what do you need from this kit that you're building? What do you need to put on this list to make it work for you? Next is to outline your budget. How much do you have to spend? You know, and be specific. If you get paid every two weeks, then, you know, look at it in that way. You know, when you get paid, how much really do you have to set aside without putting yourself into a bad financial situation? And, you know, what's that going to look like, you know, in real money? And over time, how long is it going to take to probably put together enough to get all your items? Of course, we're not there yet. But it is something to just kind of think and put in the back of your mind when you do identify your items, which is number three. You know, identify those items that meet your needs and refine this particular selection of gear several times. You want to look at it and then you want to leave it alone for a day or two. Come back to it and with a clear mind and try to be as objective as possible if this gear really is worth your money and your time. And after several rounds of this and additional research, then you may be able to make the, uh, the purchase. Now, number four is to prioritize your gear list. Before you make your purchase, you wanna see really what is the most important items and you wanna probably buy those first because if there's an emergency that happens in the future, you would probably wanna have certain things over others. Some people do the least expensive items first and then go to the most expensive items last just because it's easier to purchase and it's more motivating that way but i'm here to tell you that most likely though in a real emergency you're going to wish you had the things that probably going to make the biggest difference up front and, and you know as, as soon as possible those are items that you'd want to have so you do however you need to do it but just be aware of that and there are different philosophies of that the next is to check off your items as you go and to celebrate the victories as you go through acquiring things on your list. You know, keep a rhythm, you know, stay the course, you know, stay accountable and look at the big picture. Next is once you uh, have acquired uh, these items or a few items or whatever items that you got for that week or that, that month, whatever it is, your system, you want to try it out if you have no experience at all with it. And you wanna see if it meets your needs. And if it doesn't, then you wanna go back to number three, which is identify items that meet your needs and do additional research. If you do have experience with this item and it's not completely new to you, just check it out really well, make sure there's not defective and just go ahead and tuck it away. Next is if your items do not meet your needs, then once again, you want to do additional research. You want to return the item. You want to have as many options as possible. So you may want to reach out to other people that may have a lot more knowledge if your research hits a wall. And lastly, that continue this process until you, you finish your list. You keep refining this, uh, this list. You keep making it more purposeful and uh, you gather these items and basically and in, in, when the the list becomes fully actualized then then you have succeeded and uh, this kind of goes into the next thing here is um, 
a starter list. People want to know, you know, just kind of an outline of categories. And I'd say good seasonal appropriate clothing, seasonal appropriate shelter options, a light source. I'd probably start with a headlamp first and work down to other types. But yeah, definitely. And if it's rechargeable, you know, um, even better. A cutting tool, you know, a mid-sized fixed blade and probably a multi-tool and a decent multi-tool. I'm not talking about a $5 hardware store multi-tool and that's another thing a lot of people say to themselves well it's better to get something now than having nothing so they buy the cheap stuff only to have to repurchase a lot of items later down the road and so the overall cost is a lot higher when you do it that way the next is fire multiple ways to make fire and have multiple tender sources a lot of this can be done on a very very cheap uh you know, approach, especially with tinder. I mean, it doesn't take a lot to go out in the woods and find, you know, find several different kinds of tinder, natural tinder. And uh, you can just put them in Ziploc bags. And I mean, it's just pretty much free. <clears throat> the next is a water container and filter, whatever is appropriate for you and your budget. Um, next is food, whatever is probably the least uh, difficult to prepare, you know, like this no prep foods or just instant ready to eat foods. It's a good way to go if you can. A uh, cordage, you know, parachute cord, bank line, Kevlar line, uh, you know, fishing line. There's all kinds of uh, cordage lines, strings, uh, this stuff. So you you want to check into that. Depending on what your kit's made for, there's a lot of options. It can get completely overwhelming. <clears throat> so you may want to kind of simplify it for yourself. Uh, first aid and trauma kits uh, definitely have training. You know, the skills and experience of knowing what to do is just as important, if not maybe more than actually having the gear. You know, you need some of the gear to kind of make some of this stuff a reality, you know, to really help someone more effectively. But if you don't know what you're doing, none of that even matters. Navigation kit, you know, a compass and a map is awesome, but if you don't know how to use them, then, then who cares if you have it? Some people just default with a GPS and other different type of technologies. That's cool, but you definitely want to know at least some basic um, orientation skills with the sky, you know, sky and the stars, just kind of more basic type of stuff too. Don't forget about that. A repair kit. Some people may want to have a full on toolkit, you know, a two, three, 400 piece toolkit. And then there's other people say, Hey, you know, a roll of duct tape is all I need. Uh, communication options, man, whatever you have in terms of knowledge about how you can uh, use uh, different radios, um, that's up on, that, you know, that's for you to know. Some people are into amateur radio and they have a license to communicate on uh, more restricted bands or frequencies. And so that's up to you about how far you want to push that. <clears throat> but just having the means to talk to who you want to talk to is a big deal. A hygiene kit, you know, it could be as something as simple as uh, a roll of toilet paper, uh, wet wipes, toothbrush, comb, hand sanitizer. You can kind of just make that pretty simple if you want. The emergency cash. Uh, don't forget also about personal protection. Whatever, once again, is you something that you feel comfortable with, uh, something that's legal in your area, and just get some training and, and get some someone that's professional in that area. Uh, also hand-to-hand -hand combatives. So this one is definitely a skill and a material asset type of category, personal protection. And lastly, renewable energy source. You know, having extra batteries obviously is cool, but when they go out, they go out. A small solar panel, you know, that's portable could be a really good option. Uh, and just having a lot of your electronics use the same type of, uh, type of like energy source, maybe like a battery bank, maybe if they're all compatible or they all use uh, USB, it's awesome. Hopefully this was helpful, um, you know, how to make a prep or gear list and just a basic outline of some categories for the starter uh, gear list. As always, thanks for coming around, checking the video out. You guys take care.